Greetings from Mobility Outlook and welcome to Women in Mobility. Our guest for today is Ms. Asmita Sataye, General Manager, Material Science, Engineering Research Center at Tata Motors. Asmita, a seasoned professional specializing in automotive materials and sustainability. With over 25 years of invaluable experience, she is an expert in implementing cutting edge technologies in the realm of automobile materials and sustainability blending technical prowess with keen understanding of commercial aspects. During her illustrious career, Ashmita has left an indelible mark, filing over 50 intellectual property rights documents and securing more than 10 patents for groundbreaking innovations on a global scale. Her contributions extend beyond patents with over 15 papers published in the international journals and forums. At Tata Motors, Ashmita plays a pivotal role in anticipating and navigating global and national regulatory requirements for materials and environment. Her strategic insights have been instrumental in shaping the company's approach to product stewardship, focusing on hazardous material compliance, vehicle recyclability, material circularity and decarbonization. Let me welcome Asmita, whose wealth of knowledge and remarkable contributions continue to shape the landscape of automotive materials and sustainability. Ashmita, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Most welcome. Yeah. Uh, I would like to start by asking what motivated you to choose polymer engineering? Okay, so 25, 30 years back, uh, there was no much awareness about the polymers. The polymers were having very limited application. At least it was assumed that they have only applications in commodity market, in furniture and in household applications. But nevertheless, there was a uh, anticipation and there was a prediction that this particular branch is going to grow in future. Mm -hmm. And there would be a lot of innovations would be happening in this particular area. And that curiosity and enthusiasm just made me to choose this particular branch. And while looking back uh, 25, 30 years back now, I understand that uh, whatever predictions were there are really true. And now you would find uh, polymer in every area, in every sector, let it be medical, let it be transportation, let it be agricultural, chem uh, chemical and industry and everywhere. Now it's very difficult to find a way uh, the material, the polymer without having any, uh, the, the uh, sector without having polymer use in that. I think the day starts and ends with uh, no polymer, right? Great. So what fascinated you to focus on automotive materials sustainability and also energy conservation related. Yeah. So uh, in automobile materials plays a very crucial role and it is uh, the automobile is made up of variety of types of materials let it be steel, aluminium, glass, oil, elastomers, polymers etc. And within every type there are again hundreds of grades mm -hmm. and we generally call it as material grades. And the, uh, the role of material engineer to select the appropriate material grade looking at the end product requirements. So many times these grades are available readily in the market, but sometimes they need to be developed to mm. meet the cost, weight and quality targets. Good. And that makes this particular subject very interesting. So in this case, the uh, material engineer has to work hand in hand with raw metal supplier, uh, make a formulation, develop a new grade which is suitable and meeting the target. In addition to that, uh, there is also the energy impact all these materials give because uh, the majority of the materials they come from either oil refinery or from mining and this is very energy intensive process to extract these materials and uh, if I consider in case of uh, vehicle manufacturing, uh, 65 to 75 percent of the energy is only because of this extraction of the materials. And here the material engineer has got another role to play is to find out recycled materials, find natural materials, find substitute materials, find low carbon impact materials and uh, hence there is again lot of scope for innovation. So all these things inspired me to select the automobile uh, materials as a subject. Yeah, very interesting to know. But uh, when you started your career, I think uh, the women will be very limited you know, in this uh, ecosystem. Uh, can you share a little? insights on your initial days of professional journey? Yeah, so my initial days, the first task which was given to me is to set up a state of art material characterization lab. Okay. And where it was having lot of spectroscope, environmental chambers, weatherometers and so many state of art equipments. I immediately realized that I may have to go beyond my technical knowledge because my technical education or background was just a stepping stone for me to go in a, for, and join the Tata Motors. 
but I had to expand it in area of capex, budget, infrastructure requirements, site requirements. With the great help from my team and my senior management, we could able to establish and set up a very state of art lab in R&D Pune at Pimpri plant. And that was the first assignment. Uh, 25 years back also uh, the Indian automobile industry was facing a transformation and uh, also, also Tata Motors. We were in the manufacturing of commercial vehicles. We started manufacturing passenger vehicles and there was a great need to have a low weight materials and uh, um, the uh, use of polymers which is which was required and we had to also work on making detailed robust material specifications and also the component level testings. And uh, with the help of by contacting global suppliers, by studying a lot of national international standards, by becoming member of Indian Bureau of Indian Standards, we could establish this uh, material standards. And uh, those are currently also we are making use of them in uh, this particular thing. And third, uh, third factor I just want to also uh, emphasize upon is we were exporting vehicles to the Euro. And that time the Tata Motors was in uh, joint venture with MG Rover and we were exporting city rover vehicle uh, to European export market, uh, also to UK. And I got opportunity to, to go through the national international level regulation because it had to meet the regulatory requirement, which are export regulatory requirement on end of life and on re vehicle recyclability. So while studying them, by interpreting them, by ensuring the compliance with them, I never realized that this is carving a future for me in the area of sustainability. Wow, interesting. You are now part of uh, the Recycle Group of Siam. What exactly is your role? So I'm uh, representing uh, Tata Motors for last so many years and uh, we are part of a recycling group. Uh, we are supposed to make automotive standards. Mm -hmm. There is also representation from other automobile uh, members uh, in India and uh, we make automobile standard. Also, I'm part of a material subgroup where we are supposed to track and interpret various regulations and also uh, check whether what is the environmental impact of them and also give alternate material suggestions. So that is uh, main role of a CIM uh, committee members. In addition to that, there are many government uh, releases, lot of policies mm -hmm. and lot of regulation where uh, automobile also is a part of it. There we are supposed to give a consolidated feedback to government and our position on the various regulations which are either in draft stage or they are released recently. So this is the role of uh, CIM uh, committee. When did you get into the leadership role? So uh, my leadership role, I, I would just give you examples of how was my journey. It was uh, very exciting and engaging one. Uh, the launch of every model uh, was a pride feeling for us because it is very uh, heartening to see our material recommendations, innovations, they are becoming true, getting implemented. The second thing is also uh, uh, because of a lot of uh, motivation at the Tata Motors level and because of a lot of en uh, encouragement, we could file ten, I could file 10 patents in the area of sustainability and materials. I could also represent Tata Motors at various international national forums, including uh, motor shows, that was also one of the great uh, thing to mention about. Wow. And uh, we could write many technical papers in the area of again materials and sustainability and again credit goes to my team also in this. Uh, apart from that, for last seven and eight years, we have been winning a lot of awards in the area of sustainability and materials for most innovation uh, project or most sustainable project. And this keeps me and my team motivating in this particular journey. Wow. That's interesting. So when you say your team, there will be millennials, Gen Z coming in. So how do you approach, uh, what is the guiding principle of your leadership? Okay, so <clears throat> what I understand, uh, like a uh, few years back, it was expected that leadership to be exhibited by middle management and top management. Mm -hmm. But now there is need to have, it is to be exhibited at every role, every vertical, every group and at every individual level. So we also have Tata Motors, a very uh, fantastic leadership quality, le leadership policy, mm -hmm. where we track every individual on a leadership journey. And uh, there are two ways of having a leadership. One is people oriented, another one is task oriented. Whatever feedback I get from my team, I think I exhibit people oriented leadership. Okay. But at some times it becomes necessary to also have a task oriented leadership because that is a situational base. Though it is tough and hard, I also have to use that at certain uh, occasions. 
about millennials and all i am again a fortunate to have a great uh, team having a uh, like having all the age groups uh, from uh, generation x generation now z and millennials it is so in, uh, interesting to interact with them and get benefited on various aspects from their experience from their technical knowledge from their energy and in fact i only get benefited from <laughs> them and this is uh, this is uh, like lot of motivation comes after interacting with individual of them uh, well, uh, are there women in your team there are there are few women in my team so it is also uh, again they play a very crucial role and uh, it is at par with the uh, male colleagues and those type of things okay great so what are your views on uh, diversity equity and inclusion so i just want to mention a very simple thing is that whenever women work at workplace she should find it very comfortable that is the utmost important yeah. thing so there should be flexible policies there should be uh, the conducive environment the infrastructure should be suitable and all those things are the basic requirements uh, for the women to have and in case of equity uh, also equity and equality i think equity type of approach uh, should be exhibited uh, so that to have a more resources and opportunities to women employees and but while saying so i just also would like to mention there is a thin line between equity and equality mm -hmm. so while exhibiting equity also one should not forget that the delivery and output which is expected to come should not be compromised so let it be male colleague or let it be female so though we can give additional resources opportunities by equity but the the delivery should be there without okay. having any compromise were you comfortable in the organization yeah, when you yes. joined yeah 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 so i was very comfortable actually i uh, i was i found found very safe environment here when i joined here and again there was great support from my team i never felt like i'm the only woman working here and it was a, a great journey for me okay what according to you are the impediments for women to grow to the leadership level in in generally in organizations okay so i would say there are there are few one is a woman after graduation post graduation she joins company organization after serving few years she leave because of having a priority on personal front but while after she again decides and uh, decides to join back there is a gap in her competency and skill levels and uh, it is very difficult for her to cope up with the pace at which the industry is growing so this is a, one of the most important thing i just wanted to mention one more thing is that while uh, having a professional journey you need to have lot many people in your journey it's not only one or two there should be mentors there should be influencer there should be connectors that there, there should be uh, well wishers peers and all uh, many times women may have a very good sphere of network but they always uh, fail to differentiate their roles and they always also fail to ask the support and uh, seek support and help from them so this is one of the area where women should improve in my opinion and third it is a global level issue it's not only in india that there are no leadership at a senior role to whom this young generation would look at and get inspired and motivated of course things are changing with time and uh, i'm very hopeful that you would see a different type of future in uh, coming years for from the women mobility point of view okay uh empowering women you no know, everybody talks about it are there any prescribed uh, you no know, steps to be taken for organizations where the women employee percentage is very less okay so uh, there should be some mentorship and sponsorship programs it is up most important that to retain the women talent and also to groom them at certain level Uh, second is also find out the gaps in their competencies and can have a customized and systematic program so it may not be a very standard one but can be a customized one so that your uh, skills and opportunities gaps can be managed and can be fulfilled the third one i also feel that there should be very good connect with the senior management so it is also important that uh, all women employees get a chance at a very regular intervals to have a good connect uh, with senior team members and apart from that there should be a di uh, gender diversity and um, uh, type of programs awareness programs and campaigns not only to women but also to males to cover a broader uh, population i would say okay. so all these things are required i am also fortunate that uh, and i just would like to mention that tata motors has got uh, all this particular system they have a progressive policies 
we also have be empathetic type of pillar in our uh, leadership which not, which is uh, the gender diversity is one of the attributes under that so uh, with this progressive comprehensive and systematic approach tata motors is also leading in this particular direction yeah. i think it will be interesting uh, to be in the leadership role but you will have to manage uh, or a strike a balance between work and life how do you do it yeah so uh, at home front i was very fortunate to have a great support from my family my spouse my in-laws my parents uh, just to give a small example i do remember when my son was going to school it was just difficult for me to attend so many school days like there were four pta meetings two report days gatherings <laughs> so with the limited uh, uh, casual leaves and all it was just difficult for me to so i got a very good support from my family uh, without them i don't think i wouldn't have been taken a single step in my career at work friend again as i mentioned i was fortunate to have a engaging uh, team uh, covering all the age group uh, we just mentioned uh, millennium and uh, the generation x generation z so again it was very uh, very wonderful to interact with them uh, i always practice a de uh, delegation is one of the key in my journey so because only i could practice that i could able to take new initiatives in this particular thing and excel in my career that's interesting lastly uh, i would like to know your views uh, that see uh, the industry is moving towards new mobility do you see enough scope for women in new mobility especially from the material science point of view okay so i, I would just like to link uh, this particular question to the very inherent characteristic woman has so even if even if you are uh, see at a home or at the work front and uh, she would be always try to uh, conserve the resources she would also see how to how waste can be managed so we have lot of in sustainability two important pillar is one is circularity where uh, whatever waste which is getting generated we can treat them collect them and can make it circular and can be a part of a mainstream it is nothing but a circular economy and second is extension of life of the product i here also i think women would play a major role she always try to see that how a particular commodity can be extended uh, for its life beyond its life and this is nothing but helping the circularity and uh, uh, material circularity framework in short and i think her inherent characteristic would always have a advantage to work in this particular area so that she will understand nature and environment in a very proper manner wow wow ashmita thank you so much for being part of women and mobility thanks so much thank you thanks a lot for having me here it's pleasure and honor to be here you're most welcome